David. Why? Because the industry behind the scenes is extremely dark and you need to be very diplomatic. Yeah. Every single thing you say, every yeah. single thing you do, you need to have a diplomatic approach that protects your back. Yeah. Because it's it's business. Mm. You know, they, they they say it's nothing personal, it's just business. And that's yeah. exactly what the industry is. Yeah. So I was asking myself, am I ready for this politics? Mm. Mm. Because if you're not emotionally, physically and mentally ready, it'll break you. Yeah. And Hello everyone and welcome to Uninterrupted with me, David Mbeha. I am so excited and honored to be joined on this uh, episode by a woman that I like to refer to as an inspirational, phenomenally phenomenal Kessia Shapley. Welcome to Uninterrupted. Thank you so much, David. Thank you for having me. Ah, it's so lovely to have you. I mean, it's just been a couple of weeks uh, after you have handed over your crown mm. as uh, Miss Namibia 2022. Um, but I like you said something about actually the crown that I was given. I was born with it. Yes. Yes. Just I just want you to touch a bit on that. So let's talk about pageantry in general, yeah. right? Um, way before I actually understood the industry and what the business is about, yeah. um, I was so invested into pageantry, you know, yeah. the beauty, the glitz, the glam. And then yeah. when I was in the organization since a very young age, I went to Miss Teen Continents in Las Vegas, yeah. Nevada. And I saw that this is just business. Yes. It's nothing personal. Yeah. So you need to have realistic goals in pageantry. I love that. And I realized that it was never about the crown. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. The crown just amplifies your voice. Yeah. And, and what you want to do with the, the, the platform that you've been given. Exactly. And through that, I already knew that I already am a crown wearer yeah. in my own right because of the influence I have and the character that I have. Yeah. I have the character of a queen, so yeah. every queen wears a crown. I love that. And that was just physically amplified the moment I got crowned Miss Namibia. I like the fact that you say that because, you know, the entertainment industry, everyone thinks that I'm going to do one gig and that yeah. gig is going to make me an international superstar and it's going to make me so much money. <laughs> I think a lot of people that come in have that thought. And I have also understood that actually there is no one thing that is going to make you big. Mm. It's a series of things that you do in life that comes together and yes. they crown you. Exactly. And it's also knowing that, what am I going to use this platform that I've been given? It's like mm -hmm. a vehicle and you need to know where is it taking me to. And I like that mm. the fact that you say that because you need to know what you want to do with yes. the platform. Mm -hmm. All right, before we, we get into to our session, there's something that you also posted on your Instagram and I want to, <laughs> you know, you phrase it back, it says, yes. and you're going to answer it. How is the weather inside you? <laughs> <laughs> I said that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The weather inside me is a mixture of many things. Yeah. You know, some days it's a hurricane, other days it's sunshine. Some days it's just a moment to gaze at the stars and dream bigger. Yeah. And the weather inside me right now, I'm at this point where I'm just calm. And I know I'm working mm. towards my next success. Like yeah. that's something my mom always tells me: success is the enemy to success. Yeah. Because when you have a champion mindset, you've never reached the limit of your success. Yeah. So when you have a champion mindset, success isn't really your reach; it's your next goal. That's it's your, your reach. next goal. Yes. Yeah. So the weather inside me now, I'm calm, but I definitely have stuff that I'm working on that's yeah. going to set me aside because I think that Miss Namibia was a stepping stone. Yeah. To the next big thing yeah. and that will be the stepping stone to the next big thing yeah so yeah that's, that's I, 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 I love that and and you know Kesia, for me you strike me as somebody who is an overachiever am i right yes yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, because uh, i mean as a child you were obviously doing piano you were doing hockey you mm -hmm. were um uh doing ballet uh, I know you were doing something else again, but you were doing so many things. Yes. How, if you had to describe to somebody your childhood, when did you find the time to do all these things? Obviously, you also went to a Christian school. Right? Yes. Yeah. So, I have to be honest in saying it doesn't feel like I had a normal childhood. Mm. I mean, I started dancing when I was five. I did my first show on the theater at the National Theater of Namibia when yeah. I was seven. 
That's I've, insane. I've, I've been doing ballet for 16 years. You've been on stage all your life. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've done modern dancing for 12, hip hop for 8, music for 12. I've just been in the performing arts industry. Yeah. And ever since growing up at my Christian school, um, I experienced a lot of bullying, but I never took it personally. Mm -hmm. So I was there for a certain goal, and that's to achieve my grade 7, right, in primary school. Yeah. And so... At the school, we had goal setting. Like, you mm. literally had a goal card for yeah, every single day. You yeah. set those goals and you cross off those yeah. goals as you completed them. Yeah. And I applied that to my everyday life ever since I was a child. Mm. And in those moments, being on stage and being in the entertainment industry from such a young age, mm. I knew that I'm not a normal child. Mm. And I matured in certain ways before a lot of people my age. Mm. And I had to make peace with that because my dad yeah. would always remind me about why are you doing what you are doing? Yeah. And if I'm going to keep myself busy, it needs to be with something that's going to set me apart. Yeah. It needs to be something that's going to make me feel like I'm achieving something every day. Yeah. So even during high school, I mean, I dropped out of high school and I did homeschooling okay. because I was at the World Championships of Performing Arts in 2014 okay. and I suffered a hamstring injury. Mm -hmm. So I went to Los Angeles, I competed and I didn't place. Mm. So I saw that as a moment of, okay, I didn't place, so we're going to come back. Mm. And what's our game plan then? Yeah. And that's why I dropped out of school because I was so hungry to come back and achieve something for my country. Yeah. So yeah. I would spend four hours in the gym, two hours choreography, two hours strength. My at God, the weights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I would yeah. work towards the world championships again in 2016. Yeah. And I was training myself in this and I medaled for Namibia, gold, silver. I won a championship of the world in modeling, acting. Yeah. And that just gave me this hunger and this drive. And that made me realize if I truly want something, it takes sacrifice, it takes discipline, but it's so worth it. Yeah. And so I was only 17 at that time. David. Yeah. yeah. I was like doing stuff that yeah. blew, blew my mind. Exactly. Exactly. And so I never had a normal childhood, but for very good reason. Yeah. It was setting me up for the life that I'm living now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously being in such a very harsh industry at such... Uh, a young age how did you personally navigate through it it was it was very hard um, because, because you know as a child I remember a no is not just a no like oh no I didn't get this gig a no can literally give traumatize you for years because you just don't understand at that age so I just want to understand as a child how did you navigate through that it was it was extremely hard, especially losing friends along the way. You know, you lose relationships along the way with people. And navigating through it, I had to realize that people are temporary. The decisions mm. they make are temporary. Mm. And I cannot put my faith into something as temporary as a human life. Because mm. I will disappoint myself. Yeah. And I always make room for disappointment because mm. it's inevitable. Yeah. And once I face that disappointment, it doesn't affect me. Yeah. I just look at how I can go about it. Yeah. And so when people say no, it's always just me of going into a moment of, okay, they said no, but why? Yeah. What do I need to work on? Yeah. And I'm going to make them say yes. Yeah. Not to prove a point to them, but to prove a point to myself that I am yeah. capable. Yeah. And so just navigating through that, it's been, it's been a thing of introspection yeah. every single time. Yeah. As an adult now, do you sometimes take time to say, it's okay, I don't need to achieve all these goals that we were taught back in school <laughs> do you have moments as an ad ad adult now where you say i think it's it's i'm, I'm okay you know it's it's really hard to say david because one thing that i've been challenged with yeah. in this industry is my age yeah and i'm a colored girl yeah those two combinations you don't get seriously you don't take it taken seriously in the industry yeah. And so I also had to level up in that way to prove to people that I'm not just a young colored girl that you could push around, mm. you know. And so being an adult, I've seen that I needed to apply myself to my work ethic in a mm. way that people will take me seriously. Yeah. Because I'm part of an ethnicity that is getting broken down mm. because of their skin tone. Mm. And even now, um, I'm doing full-time studies. Yeah. So my every single day is fully dedicated to full-time studies. Mm. But behind the curtains, there's this artist yeah. that wants to make music, yeah. that wants to dance. I saw the other day when you were dancing, I was like, this is incredible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there's still a part of me where 
I'm at peace with the fact that I'm doing full time studies, mm. but I know that there's still a performing artist mm. behind the curtains that is going to come out. Yeah. Yes. If you had to go back and speak to your younger self, mm-hmm. how old is she? Let's say she's 13. And what is your message to her? My message to her is to not take life too seriously, live in the moment, and don't be scared. Mm. Be confident, be bold. Because a couple of years from now, you're going to be the queen of Namibia. You you're going to need those characters, yeah. characteristics. Yeah. yeah. And then now that you are growing, uh, grown as an adult, how old is she? Is she is she growing with you as time goes? She's growing with me. Um, every single day, it's a growing experience. Um, there's a lot of stuff I have to stomach that yeah. I can't be vocal about because I need to think of those I love around me mm. and I need to think about the empire I'm trying to build for myself and my future family. Mm. So even <clears throat> in this industry, it's been hard for me to make any real human connection because not everyone's intentions are pure and real, Yeah. no matter how open you are. Yeah. Um, so I, w- I don't want to say I have my walls up. I'm a very open person because I yeah. love to inspire. I love to see people happy. I love to know different et- ethnicities, cultures, but... There's a side of me where I'm like, I have a war up yeah. for protective measures yeah. because there's still a lot that I need to do in this lifetime. Yeah. And so the adult Cassia that I'm growing with right now, she realizes what her mandate is. Yeah. And as much as she maybe wants to fall in love, as much as she wants to you know, stop this whole college thing and pursue yeah. performing <laughs> arts, like... <laughs> Yeah. There's another Cassia that's realistic and she's like, girl, you started something, you need to finish it. Yeah. You don't have time for a relationship right now. So it's definitely a thing of you need to speak to yourself. It mm. sounds weird, but you need to talk to your future self and be like, I'm coming for you yeah. and we're going to be great. Yeah. In five years from now, we're going to have established our brand. Yeah. We're going to have an empire. Yeah. And then maybe we can consider something else. Yes. When, when she fi- uh, becomes a fully fledged um Cassia that you have imagined what yes. do, yeah what do, what do you imagine her to be you know i just see uh, already now i see myself as this powerful independent woman and you are like i want to walk into a room and i want people to feel the power that rests upon me mm. and that is not something that i do by myself that's god guys mm. i can't i can't shake this enough you know i'm yeah. not a very religious person but I'm a very spiritual person and I know that God is my creator. Yeah. And there's a certain countenance that rests upon me when he walks with me into yeah, a room. I know. And it's just, I see Cassia as this, this woman of influence. Yeah. When people look at her, they should be like, I want to get to know that woman. Yes. There's something about that woman. Yeah. And that is the woman that I'm building every day. And that's the day. woman you are molding every day. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I was, I had the first time, okay, that's when you were crowned. I was like, I know I have seen her somewhere. <laughs> you know, because I remember when I was uh, one of the judges for the auditions at Vindu Crescent Week. And I, I still remember you walked in. Yeah. And I, I said to myself, that is Miss Namibia. Yeah. <laughs> and that was way before they even started looking for, you know, the call out yes. for Miss Namibia. But I knew there was something about you, your energy when you stood there. Yes. I said, this girl should definitely try out for Miss Namibia. So when wow. I saw you win, I was like, I knew it. Yeah. But then I was like, was it her? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it definitely was. <laughs> it was. But I'm also the shy girl. Remember, like, no one knew about Cassia before Miss Namibia. Yeah. Like, Cassia was the girl under the radar. And then she decides to enter Miss Namibia. <laughs> stunningly beautiful. Let's just talk about that. Thank stunningly you. beautiful. Because I, rem- I remember your audition. I think you also had like a jacket. Like, was it um, a leather jacket yes. on? Yes. I do remember yes. you. <laughs> I do because you were so memorable. I, I I just there was something about you when you walked in there. Your face, I said to myself, it's either this girl must be Miss Namibia or she <laughs> needs to be on a cover of a magazine somewhere in Los Angeles. Wow! But let's talk about your modeling career. How did you get into that? So I started modeling. This is actually a very funny story. It was while I was still at the high school in grade eight, yeah. and we had photo day. Okay. And I was actually having crutches because I hurt my ankle. Yeah. And I was, was that just from hockey. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's just from being Cassia, guys. Like I don't even remember what it's from. <laughs> so yeah. I'm standing in the line to get my photo taken, but mm. I'm a very shy, quiet, and coy girl because I was not the popular girl in school. Like no one knew me. Yeah. So I was just waiting for my photo, and the photographer came up to me, and she says. Here's my card. I'm a photographer, but I'm also a modeling instructor. Yeah. Give this to your mother. When she said, give this to your mother, I was like, this is legit. 
because no one will be like, you should come out to my studio and take a couple of photos, you know. Like, yeah. That scene is very sketchy sometimes, yeah. right? Yeah. So when she said, tell your mother, she should contact me. Yeah. And this woman saw this potential in me and I pursued the modeling and I did small pageants like my Yefra Boltong Fears, Pump yeah. and Duke. Yeah. Um, I did Miss Preteen where I placed top five. I did mm. Miss Teen where I was first runner up. Mm. Went to Las Vegas. Yeah. And I contemplated Miss Namibia, David. Why? Because the industry behind the scenes is extremely dark and you need to be very diplomatic. Yeah. In every single thing you say, every yeah. single thing you do, you need to have a diplomatic approach that protects your back. Yeah. Because it's it's business. Mm. You know, they, they, they say it's nothing personal, it's just business. And that's yeah. exactly what the industry is. Yeah. So I was asking myself, am I ready for this politics? Mm. Mm. Because if you're not emotionally, physically and mentally ready, it will break you. Yeah. And if you don't have a plan, if you win the crown, if you don't win the crown, or if you don't place, you're going to fall flat. Yeah. Because people are so hungry for this thing, and then they think once they accomplish that, then it's done. Yeah. It's not. Just, it's, not. it's just the beginning. Exactly. So that's how I got into my modeling. And I want to go model international, David. And I, I really want to well, Honestly, <laughs> it's, it's, I feel like it's, uh, you know, when we talk about law hanging fruits. Yeah. <laughs> I see it. Thank you. I, I honestly see it. But also, you are such an inspirational person. Like, what motivates you? What motivates me is the trauma that I know I didn't deserve growing up. Mm. But I'm grateful for that because it made me who I am today. So I'm inspired by every bad day that I've had because yeah. every bad day is a testimony of me not giving up. Yeah. And it's a lonely industry. Yeah. Um, it's lonely and you need to be okay with being lonely, but don't let it consume you. And the only fear you should have is the fear of failure. Yeah. And you should never be scared. Yeah. And that inspires me. Oh, that is amazing, Cassia. <laughs> you know, Beyonce has the song that says, uh, is it Pretty Heads? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, pretty does hurt, girl. Like, it really <laughs> hurts, man. Yeah, it's especially in, 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 in the beauty industry. Uh, what are some of the things that you've had to learn to keep you going? I mean, in terms of like just speaking to yourself, like that war inside when it, you know, it wants to, whether it image and make you feel like you're not worthy. What kind of talks do you do with yourself? So I get extremely, I don't want to say I'm hard on myself, but I just look back at what I achieved. And when I have a downfall, I go to myself and I literally like tell myself, you are better than this. Yeah. I am so disappointed in you. What are you doing? You have yeah. literally everything you need and you are here sulking. Why? Yeah. And it's just the thing of we are human. You yeah. know, we are bound to have these downfalls. Yeah. But it's what we do to get back up that matters. Yeah. And you can either have a healthy coping mechanism or an unhealthy one. Mm. So I have this healthy coping mechanism where I tell myself, mm. remember what where you started. Remember what got you here yeah. and feed off of the pain that is rooted in your purpose mm. because that is what's going to make you succeed. Mm. So either you get comfortable with being uncomfortable or mm. you break down mm. and there's nothing left of you beside. Yeah. Yeah. And at what point do you have grace towards yourself? Is it in moments when you feel like I might not get there, but I'm still going to practice grace towards myself? So even now, like, Post Miss Namibia, I realized that I need to have grace that that chapter is over, mm. but I'm moving on to the next bigger chapter. Yeah. I'm just continuing my story. Yeah. So I have grace with myself in terms of I'm going to take a, a break. No one will know of Cassia for a while. Yeah. And that is grace upon myself because I was not into social media at all at some point. And then yeah. this Namibia happened and I went viral. <laughs> yeah. And then I had to embrace that too. Yeah. So now I have grace on myself to know that I don't always have to be relevant all the time. Mm. And that when I do show up, I should show up with a purpose. Yeah. I should show up with an impact. Yeah. That's exactly what I did with Miss Namibia. Yeah. I was out of pageants for four years. Mm. And then I come back and I win. <laughs> like, yeah. You so know? you are very intentional in terms of what you want to do. Very intentional with every decision I make, every person I meet, yeah. every relationship I build. Yeah. And I don't burn bridges because I know that we all need each other yeah. at some point. Yeah, that is so true. That is so true. But also, you know, you, you when you talk about no one is going to know, what are you talking about? <laughs> like no, no one is going to know Kesia for a while. 
I feel like you are one of the. I'm looking at you know when I look at Zozi Bini, right? Mm. She wins this Miss Universe, mm. and after Miss Universe, you know, she is now. When you look at her, she has transformed into this TV host. Yeah. Because she is such an amazing speaker, and that's where I see you. I see you like <laughs> facilitating whether it's events. I see you going into TV hosting. I see you into the podcast area. There's, I feel like there's so much for you. Yes. And now, <laughs> I feel like Miss Namibia was like that door that had to open all these other avenues. Yes. So I feel like you have you your future is so bright, and it's up to you to look and say, where do I want to go? What do I want to do? Mm. But I feel like you're gonna have such an amazing life, you know. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I see it. I see it Thank so you. well. Um, let's talk about your mom. Yes. The two of you. <laughs> <laughs> I watch most of your videos and I'm like these two and she goes everywhere you go yes. I love that relationship the two. how were you able to build such a, a unique beautiful relationship like I said we endured a, a certain level of pain yeah. together Yeah. and that drew us closer that on the good days we just enjoy each other's company yeah. because we can relate to that level. Yeah. So my mom is my manager. Like it, she goes with me to every meeting. Yeah. She goes with me to every fitting. She's yeah. also a dental technologist by profession. Yeah. She was the first African woman yeah. to open a dental laboratory. Listen. <laughs> so I have big shoes to fall. Yeah. Right. So she's literally my best friend. She doesn't feel like a mom most of the time. Yeah. It feels like my chummy. Yeah. You know? Momager. Momager. <laughs> like, Chris Jenner, hello. You yeah, know? <laughs> I love that. I really honestly love that. Yeah, and our, our relationship is always growing stronger, especially through the Miss Namibia journey. If yeah. I didn't have my mom, David, yeah. I honestly don't know how I would have made it through. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, and, and obviously, like, Heavy is the head that wears the crown. Mm -hmm. I mean, with all the beauty and the glamour that may come with, you know, the title, there's also a, a lot of criticism that comes with it. How were you able to navigate those? One thing I realized is that if I stay true to myself, mm. no one can shoot me with anything. Right. Like when I try to be someone I'm not, where they find something to break me down. <sighs> so when you live your life with an open book, no one can say anything to you or about you. Right? Yeah. Because I tell I tell my own story already, so you yeah. don't have to tell it on my behalf. Exactly. You don't so, have to say Cassia was found dancing because I I already tell you that I'm a dancer. Exactly. Too. Yeah. So yeah. they were I I've never experienced any form of negativity from the Namibian people. Yeah. Any form like the unity I felt the love, the country yeah. and the love during my reign mm. is something that I will carry with me forever. That yeah. was the only reason I stayed, David. For my full year is because yeah. of the people behind me yeah that's the reason i stayed yeah the people whose voices need to be heard yeah. the dreams that need to be met yeah the people that are looking up to me like i love that woman yeah. i can't let those people down yeah. so i've been navigating through the negatives mm. by just being myself yeah. because before mr Namibia, i was cassia during mr Namibia, i showcased cassia mm. she got crowned and then she was amplified yeah and she never changed. She never changed. Ever. That is amazing. And you always <laughs> remain true to yourself. Honeycomb. Honeycomb. Mm. <laughs> I just love the sound of it. <laughs> yes. I love it. How did you come up with the name? And why are you so passionate about it? So when I was 10, my parents were preachers, right? Also mm. very hard to live up to those standards. But besides that, um, yeah. they were preachers. And they would always do outreaches, especially yeah. to the north. And I remember when I was 12, we did an outreach, and it was in the cold. Mm. And I saw this little child. Oh, I don't want to cry. Oh my. I saw this little child drinking out of a river. And I was so young, and then I got home. And that night, I refused to eat. And my parents were like, what's wrong with you? And I told him, I just saw a child my age drinking water out of a river. I feel guilty having this plate of food. That was something that stuck with me because I realized the heart that I have for people. Also, I'm in the medical industry. And the Honeycomb Heaven Foundation was established in 2022 as the Honeycomb Heaven Foundation. Mm. But the project has been running in retrospect from the moment my parents had their ministry, mm. from the moment I was Miss Teen Namibia, mm. 
mm-hmm. and then I could establish it and have it re- registered as a legal non-profit organization mm-hmm. in 2022, right before I left for Miss Universe. Mm-hmm. So it started off as something small, and it's been progressing. And there are still projects running, as we speak, David, that are running. Yeah. That no one knows about yet because we still want to get momentum for the foundation, which we are working on. Mm. But it's going to be a catalyst of hope for the lost. Yeah. Really, it is. You know, those people that want to know why are they struggling. They will come to the Anikum Heaven Foundation. We will tell them why, and mm. they will know how to get out of it. Yeah. So that is how the Anikum Heaven Foundation was founded. Yes, so inspiring. So inspiring. Your life is a classroom. What are you <laughs> teaching? My life is a classroom. What am I teaching? Mm. I'm teaching the beauty and the ugly side of life. Mm. Because the worst thing we can ever do is to make people believe that life offers you and it, it um, owes you something. It really mm. doesn't. Mm. It's either good or it's bad, depending on how you view it. You can look at a bad situation and you can decide that it's going to break you. Or you can look at a bad situation and influence it with the good in the bad. Because mm. there's always a good side to a bad thing that you are going to do. Mm. Always. Yeah. What's that saying that if you can't run, walk, if you can't walk, crawl, but mm. never stop going forward. Ah. And if you fall, fall forward. I love it. Yes. I love it, love it. Okay, in, in closing, I want to ask... Um, I'm going to ask you to say something to the Kessia that you would want to see um, when people watch this 50, 60 years from now. What is she mm. like? The Kessia then mm. has an empire established mm. that progresses every single day and gives back to those that deserve to live a life fulfilled. Yeah. that are not heard and whose dreams have not been met yet. Mm. Cassia is someone that doesn't just impact those that are known, but the unknown that deserves to be known. Yeah. And with her power, she carries the power of those around her. Mm. Can you imagine the immaculate force I'll be carrying five years from now mm. if I don't give up on Cassia now? Yeah. So I want to tell her, girl, you made it. And yeah. it's only the beginning. Yeah. That is so beautiful, uh, so graceful, <laughs> so eloquent, so inspirational. Thank you so much for joining us on this session. It has been so inspiring just sitting next to you and listening to you speak. And I feel so excited to see all these things, uh, you know, come into fruition because I know that the, each and every goal um, backed up by your tenacity and your hard work is truly um, going to be remarkable. Thank you so much, David. Thank you for having me. Uninterrupted. <laughs>